we're taking it up a level that we have in years past. And it's, um, you can just tell from the coach's excitement um, to their attention to detail, to how guys are um, reacting to their coaching. Uh, this, this team is gonna be awesome. Anything we wanna do, man. I mean, all, you name it, man. We got 4-2, four, 4-3, four, maybe 4-1. I don't know what Tyreek runs now, who knows? But he, uh, we, we, we got guys that can absolutely fly all over the field and speed kills in this game. Travis Kelsey says the Chiefs are taking the offense up a level, and we're taking it up a level on today's PFT Live draft. The coin toss, I don't want to say it's done. It's been temporarily suspended while we have a different device for determining the first pick. Today's draft, obviously, the best offenses for 2019. So, Chris, what we have decided to try out here is a trivia question. Now, we have to work a little bit on the details of how we handle the trivia question. For example, control room, specifically stats. Don't put the trivia question in the sheets Man. before I have a chance to ask the trivia question. He's had six minutes is. to Google an answer. I didn't six Google. Minutes to... I promise sure you. Sure you didn't. I promise sure you. Sure you didn't. I promise sure you. Sure you didn't. <laughs> All right, here's the question. The Chiefs scored 565 points last season. How many teams have ever scored more points in a single season? And I specifically made it easier for you. Instead of asking the specific number or the teams, I'm just giving you the over-under. Is it over-under 1.5? I, I, you know, and I, I'm almost a little embarrassed that I don't know this really off the top of my head. And I really have no clue here. I, I'm not going to say it's many. I'm going to go with the over as it being like two. That sounds yeah, you're right. Yeah, you win. You get the first pick. Yeah, good job. Who what who yeah. who are the two though? If, if does anybody want to tell me that? I I don't know. I had it, but now it's gone. 2013 Broncos. Okay, had more and, and and the 2007 Patriots. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. So there you have it. Okay, I'm going first as usual. I like it, and I will choose the Kansas City Chiefs. Shock. Yes. Sh we should have had. We should have had every. Every offense but the Chiefs, but go ahead. You get the Chiefs. How could I not pick them? Uh, the, the offense, Andy Reid's aggressiveness, the talent they have, the damn quarterback is an absolute just must, must watch freak of nature. I mean, just the way they play. Yes. And, and again, yeah, there's okay. Maybe a little questions at the running back situation, but not really. I mean, when Damian Williams healthy, he proved he's capable of, of being a really good NFL running back, good offensive line and something we talked about, you know, earlier, Mike, it, it is year two for Patrick Mahomes. And even though last year was amazing, you know, I know you've heard me say there was plays that were left on the field uh, in a number of games, even though the stats were awesome, and that's scary. And I just think they're not going to manage them as much. There's going to be more of a trust and just, hey, let's put more offense in. Let's do more concepts. Let's let them be aggressive. We don't have to worry about that now. He knows how to play and what to expect, so I go Chiefs. Yeah, you didn't even need to explain it, Chiefs. We all know Chiefs, yeah. Chiefs best. I mean, I, and – there's no reason to even expect any type of a letdown from this team. They are going to take it next level. And it was just so, so obvious in their preseason opener that this team is already where it needs to be for the regular season. They look as good as they did in the regular season. And Patrick Mahomes, the same guy that he was a year ago. If anybody had any doubts, he's the same guy. All right. I, I, I'm going to stay in the conference, but not in the division. If Baker Mayfield is going to tell us the hype is real, I'm going to believe him. And the hype is real. Baker Mayfield, Jarvis Landry, Odo Beckham Jr., David Njoku, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt once his suspension ends. Yeah, I know the offensive line isn't dominant, but it doesn't need to be. Get rid of the ball quickly and off you go. And I think that offense in Cleveland has the potential to be spectacular. It just could, could you imagine how good that offense would be if they played in a dome? Right? Um, right. Same thing for the Chiefs, too. But I think the Browns are going to be an exciting offense. I don't know if they're going to be in the top five all time in yardage or points, but they're going to be fun to watch because they're going to be able to score anytime, any place, anywhere. One of the things last year you pointed about the Chiefs, Chris, is that you have to defend the whole field right. when you are going against the Chiefs. And I think that's going to be true of this year's Browns. You're going to have to defend the whole field. If you take away Odell Beckham Jr., Jarvis Landry is going to kill you underneath. You take away the run, Beckham is going to kill you over the top. Mayfield is going to be able to throw it pretty much anywhere, and he's going to lead that team 
consistently to points and yardage, and we'll see how many wins go along with it. A lot of it's going to depend on what the defense can do. Yep, uh, totally. I mean, this is another one. I think it's a no-brainer. These were the top two picks. I mean, because of the quarterback, because of the weapons on the outside, because of the coaches and the aggressive nature of their play calling, and like you said, having to defend the whole field. Uh, the, the Cleveland Browns are a little different than Kansas City in the fact that I do think they'll have more semblance of a run game, right? But uh, I'm with you. That was, that was a no-brainer, so they're gone. Now, round two. This is where it gets a little dicey. There's a lot of options here. I don't know where to go exactly, but I think I'm going to go. I mean, we're going for who will be the best offenses, and I'm going to go with a team that was number two in offense last year, and I think they're going to be better and that's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, I don't know if that translates to wins. It might not. But I know Bruce Arians is there, and it's going to be bombs away. And they got Mike Evans. And they got Chris Godwin, who might not be mainstream household name quite yet, but he is very good and going to be very capable of creating a niche in the offense there for Bruce Arians. O.J. Howard at tight end. You're hearing good things about Ronald Jones at running back. I think he's going to be a, a big factor in the pass game coming out of the backfield. And then they do have Peyton Barber, who I think is one of the more underrated uh, running backs in all of football. So I think I look at that. Jameis Winston is a phenomenal intermediate to deep ball thrower, and that fits Bruce Arians. And one other factor is I'm just not sure about their defense. There might be a lot of games where – they're down by 10 in the fourth quarter or down by seven in the fourth quarter and they have to throw more and put more stats on the board board. And that's why I'm going to Buccaneers. Yeah. You know, I have them on my list. They may have been my third pick. I'm kind of glad you took them. Now I was nervous. You were going to take the, the team that I really considered making my first pick, but if I had, you would have been all over the Browns in round two. So I went Browns round one and I held until round two, your Philadelphia oh. Eagles. I, I am convinced that offense is going to be phenomenal this year. They got Jordan Howard from the Bears. They stole him. And I know they have a whole stable of running backs, but that's good, right? Jordan Howard's talented. You put somebody else in uh, if, if he's not getting it done or if you just want to have the variety. They've got guys there that can get it done at every position. They've got Deshaun Jackson back. You put him together with Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz hasn't had that consistent deep threat, and they love Deshaun Jackson in Philadelphia. They're already building the chemistry. I think this can be a special, special offense. you got Alshon Jeffrey trying to redeem himself for what happened last year in that playoff game when he dropped the pass at a time when it looked like the Eagles were going to knock off the Saints. I, I, I just think a healthy Carson Wentz is the key. But I love the Philadelphia Eagles offense. They can get back to – and the only caveat is this, Chris. Don't get so smitten with what Wentz can do that you get away from the meat and potatoes. That's Still right. run the ball. Yep. Run the ball, run the ball. But then when it's time to, to have that lightning strike, Deshaun Jackson's going to be there deep. Alshon Jeffrey's going to be there at an intermediate level. You, you've still got Zach Ertz getting it done. Dallas Goddard coming into his own, hopefully for the Eagles' sake, as a tight end option. And th this can be a great offense in 2019. Ah, uh, Man, that hurt me. I just, you're just uh, a little smarter than you look. I just was not expecting you to go there. I was really, I was sandbagging. That that was the second pick. That was, the, I just didn't think you were smart enough to come up with it. I really didn't. And you're, yeah, I don't know whether to, I don't know whether to be uh, happy or insulted about that. Yeah, I'd be insulted. I think I'm, ins was, I'm a yeah, little insulted. It was an insult. Don't worry. There's no doubt about it. I was insulting you for sure. Um, so yeah. is it safe to say you self outsmarted yourself? I self outsmarted. I see. When you scout, you scout yourself and the opponent too much. You can, you know, too many, too many things going on in your brain. And yeah, that really messed me up because I just did not think you were going to go there. I thought you. Oh, he's on the ropes. I he's am. buying time. And now I'm going to be transparent. No, I'm going to be transparent. It's, it's the 49ers, the Colts, the Falcons. Those are all teams I'm looking at right there uh, that are in the conversation for best offenses. And I think I'm going to go with the Atlanta Falcons. You know, the 49ers, I'm just not quite sure about Jimmy Garoppolo. The Colts, the Andrew Luck thing scares me just a little bit. Uh, I know that Matt Ryan is Johnny Cons consistency and he's been playing really good football the last two years and Calvin Ridley being in year two um, was much better as a rookie than I gave him credit for coming out in the draft 
Uh, I, I know he's a stud. You know, my brother, that's one of the first things he brought up about the Atlanta Falcons. Man, this Calvin Ridley. So I thought that was just, you know, that, that made my ears perk up a little bit as well. But then when Muhammad Sanu is your third receiver and Devontae Freeman and Dirk Cutter's there, all of those things, I just look at that as a, a pretty damn good unit right there that can put up a lot of points and yards. You know, there's a lot to choose from at this point, yeah. especially because I'm stunned you took the Falcons. And I and I, I'm tempted, I'm tempted to to go, you know, kind of curveball and say this Vikings offense with Gary Kubiak there. And, you know, without all the adversity they went through last year, they lost line coach Tony Sperano right before training camp. And and John DeFilippo had the offense all screwed up because he was trying to to parlay that gig into a head coaching job and they didn't run the ball the way they should. But I'm just gonna look. We're down to number six. Yeah. Right. Right. And at number six, how can you not have the Saint, the the Los Angeles Rams or the St. Louis Rams on the list? And that's the first time I've done that. And they moved four years ago. The L.A. Rams at at round three. Yeah. I, I still don't think they're going to be what they were last year. Right. But I also think that all this noise out there about Todd Gurley and Jared Goff and has the rest of the league caught up to Sean McVay, they're going to get pissed off at some point. And they're going to take it out on some people. And also, having a great defense, and I think the defense is still going to be great, if not better than it was last year, I, I think that uh, th that helps the offense even more. And, uh, you know, I, maybe not the Chiefs level, maybe not the Browns level, but still good enough to be in this conversation. And I'm kind of stunned you didn't even bring that up as you were rattling off your choices for your third round pick. They, they are on my longer list, but I, I guess the, the way the year ended and the offense kind of sputtering down the stretch to a degree – uh, and especially the passing game, you know, other than really the Saints game, who just probably play, they played too much man to man in that game in general. Yeah, I guess they just left a bad taste in my mouth. And, and I do. I want to see how they're going to reinvent themselves. They became a little predict predictable. Teams crack the code on them a little bit. I mean, there's still a lot of talent. A lot of what you said is true there. But uh, that's what made me chicken out. I still think they're good enough to be number six. I just, I yeah, I'm not going to disagree and, with you and, there. And and the fact the fact that we would have them that low and that you had them on your longer list, that's just kind of, not not that they're paying attention to what we're saying, but that's the kind of thing that contributes to this vibe out there, this negative vibe that they can use to avoid the complacency that would set in for a team that made it to the Super Bowl, lost, and now has to go back to zero and zero and have that target on their back. They don't have the same target on their back yeah. that a Super Bowl team would have because we all assume the offense isn't going to be as good. All right, Chris's picks, Chiefs, Buccaneers, Falcons. I've got the Browns, Eagles, and the Rams, the best offenses in 2019. We'll put this on the website and get your thoughts later in the day. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.